Hi, and welcome back to Dance with Mary NYC. This month, I'd like to talk to you about basic stitching methods for point shoes. If you've gotten your first pair of point shoes, then you understand what I'm talking about. It can be very confusing about what goes where. I've asked Kelsey to help me out again today. Hi, Kelsey. Hi. Kelsey's back. I'm really excited to have her back. One of the reasons I'm so excited is Kelsey, I was her first point shoe teacher. So I'm really excited to have her on here. And we're going to go over some of the basics for you. It's important that you have all your tools organized and ready to go. You can find most of these items at your local drugstore, craft store, and dance store. Try to have a candle ready with some matches, a measuring tape, needles, heavy duty needles work best, different options for ribbon, scissors, unwaxed dental floss, thread, and all kinds of options for elastic. Kelsey, we're going to do the basic method right now, so I want to do it as if you've never worn point shoes before. If you can remember all the way back to your first time, right? I remember you when you were a young student, yeah. and I know it can be very confusing what goes where. It looks like there's lots of things going on. So we want to make sure always to get all your tools together, and we've got all our tools here. And then, of course, you want your new point shoes. Now, you have cut the satin off the tips. You can cut the satin off the tips, or you can even leave the satin on the tips. That's a possibility as well. It just depends. We'll talk about more about surface things in another segment. Uh, so you have your point shoe, and I'm going to ask you to go ahead and slip your point shoe on so that we can show everybody what we do. What you're going to do is you're just going to take a pen or a pencil, and you're going to mark the dancer's arch. I'm marking about the midpoint of her arch. The bottom arch is called the transverse arch. I'm also going to mark the outside there. The bottom arch is called the transverse arch, and you want to find the highest point in the transverse arch, or where it meets the ankle, right, or the shin bone. And then I'm going to ask you to go ahead and slip those shoes off. Right, and then you can see where I've made my pen marks, right, and you can even reinforce the pen mark if you feel like it's not clear enough for you. Right, so that's about the middle of the highest point of her transverse arch, and that's where I've marked with my pen. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a set of my ribbons. Here are my ribbons. Uh, many ribbons are made out of uh, nylon now. It used to be they were always made of satin. E they were even made of grow grain. Nylon is, does not have two surfaces. It's the same. It's buff on both sides. Uh, satin will very often have a shiny side, and it will have a matte side. Always you want to go with a satin ribbon. You want to go shiny side out, matte side into your body. All I'm going to do is the ribbon comes in one long continuous piece. Once in a while, you'll get companies that will pre-cut the ribbon for you. If it's not pre-cut, this is what you're going to do. You get a generous amount of the ribbon. I'm going to cut the ribbon once. So there I have two pieces right now. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut that ribbon once again. Right, so just even it up. And there's I'm cutting it once again. So I have four pieces in all. So because you're going to need two per, per side. Right? So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a match. Right? Be careful of your young, young student. You want to get some adult supervision. And I'm going to just light a candle. And Kelsey, do you, I don't know if you remember all the way back to what I used to say. I used to say, we're going to light a candle because we're making an offering to the point shoe gods. <laughs> <laughs> you probably don't remember that, but I remember saying that. And, it usually got a laugh when I said it. Just be careful if you're a young student, you want some adult supervision. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and singe the edges of all the ribbons. Right? And I'm just going to hand you those off as, as I do it. Right? And you want to seal the edges because the edges will fray. Right? Just be careful if you catch, if it starts to go on fire, you just blow it right out. Right? Right? Safety first. You may want to put it on top of some kind of candle holder just to make sure, right? There, so I'm going to go ahead and singe all these edges, right? And they just seal themselves that way. Mm-hmm. There we go. All right, we've got all four pieces sealed, yes? OK, yes. terrific. So then I'm going to blow out my candle, safety first. Right? And then what we do is we're going to get our elastic. Elastic, once again, they usually bring, give it to you in one continuous piece. Sometimes they pre-cut it for you. If they haven't, here's my one continuous piece. I'm going to fold it in half, and all I'm going to do is cut the elastic right there. Right? Good. So that shoe that we've marked, 
right? Oh, and you've already picked left and right. Very important that you pick left and right in your point shoes. Uh, way back in the day, they used to tell us not to alternate, to alternate our point shoe sides, meaning change the right and the left. Now what the podiatrists are saying is do not change the left and the right shoe because you're breaking that shoe in for that individual foot, and you don't want to go and switch sides because you're sort of customizing it for that individual foot. So don't switch sides. So she's marked the left, and maybe uh, can we also see the right as well? Right, so I would mark that separately for that foot and everything. Okay, that's terrific. So let's just worry about the left shoe right now. So uh, let's go ahead and take that ribbon piece and place the center of the ribbon on that mark that we've made. That's terrific. And you don't have to go that far down, right. And what you're gonna do is take a very strong needle uh, I would suggest something kind of thick, and I've got some really good thread here. You could use unwaxed dental floss if you like, however, I'm gonna use thread today. Important point about the thread, polyester thread is no good for this kind of work. It just tears way too easy. I've got a really high level cotton thread. It's gonna hold together better, it's not gonna break while I'm trying to work with it, and the stitches aren't gonna break as you're dancing. So we've already threaded a needle. Very important that you use a double of the thread and not it at the end. So Kelsey's got her edge here. Now in some techniques, what they do is they separate. There's a muslin layer and a satin layer. So what they do is they separate it so that this piercing doesn't show on the outside. The stitches won't show, you won't pierce that outside. So we begin stitching and you just catch that inner layer. Mm -hmm. And you just go ahead and you're just gonna begin to do that and stitch from the top. And I'm gonna let you go ahead and keep doing that one. Right, very good. Okay, so that's one technique. And what she's gonna do is she's gonna just do what we call a running stitch. A running stitch is just where you go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. It doesn't have to be a lock stitch or anything fancy like that. Occasionally people can do this on sewing machines. The only issue with sewing machines is when you turn the corners, it is actually more difficult. So uh, Kelsey's working away on her shoe. I'm gonna show you what a finished product looks like for the ribbon. So the interior is gonna look like this. And the exterior, the stitches don't show on the outside. So once again, you can see the center of that ribbon is right on that center mark. And I've followed the edges of the ribbon and gone just back and forth and back and forth and uh, back and forth. I didn't pierce the outside of my fabric and I went partially down. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Kelsey, let's go on to the elastic. All right, we've got our sample here. So we're gonna go on to the elastic, and once again, you've cut your elastic, right? So you have your individual pieces. Right. Good, so you've got, you've got one piece per shoe. Occasionally, teachers will tell you to take two pieces per shoe. That's called Xing the elastic. We're not gonna talk about this one. This is just the most basic one. Uh, what I like to do, just for precision purposes, is I like to mark this seam right here is called the stay. That's the back of the shoe. I like to take my tape measure, and I like to mark one inch away from the stay. Right, so I'm gonna right, mark one inch away from the stay on the exterior and the interior of the shoe. Right, so there it is, it's one inch away from the stay. Uh, you don't ever want to put something directly on the stay, that's your Achilles tendon, and it would rub your Achilles tendon. Uh, now there is a little bit of debate on whether to put the elastic, whether to place it on the interior of the shoe or the exterior of the shoe. If you place it on the interior of the shoe, it looks neater, you can hide it. If you place it on the exterior, it helps you avoid heel blisters. Some people have very sensitive heels. Some people feel like on the outside it doesn't look so nice. Some people prefer it on the inside. I'm gonna show you actually a technique that sort of negates all of that. Right, so we have our elastic our pre-cut elastic, and I'm gonna ask you just to hold on to that shoe. So uh, our mark, you see the mark, the one inch mark away from the stay, and Kelsey, I'm gonna ask, actually ask you to take that elastic mm -hmm, and go ahead and put it, you're gonna put it on the inside, the middle of the elastic goes on that mark. Now what we're gonna do is we are actually gonna pierce the fabric on this one. You're gonna go right through the fabric, right? And then you're going to actually jump the casing up here. This is the drawstring casing up here. You don't want to pierce that drawstring casing because then you're not going to be able to pull the drawstring. All right, so you're just going to keep jumping it back and forth. You go over and under. Just a simple in and out stitch, nothing fancy. All right, I'm just going to keep going back and forth like that. So you can go ahead and finish that one up. Why don't you finish that one up? And I'm going to grab my finished product of that. 
Right, so here I am, I've got where I've jumped the drawstring casing. And it's just gone in and out. So this way you don't have to worry about the exterior looking sloppy. And you also don't have to worry about the heel blisters or heel sensitivity if somebody has it. This is a very efficient way of stitching that area so that it pulls it up towards the foot. Another thing that we may want to note when we're doing our stitching, go ahead, yeah, you can go ahead and finish that out. And you're going to finish knotting it. Go ahead and tie it off. Right. Very good. It's good to learn some sewing skin, skills while you do this, right? Good. And then you maybe want to cut it off. I'll help you out with that. Good. Now, very important. And Kelsey, I was wondering if you could get your foot right up there. We want to show some, uh, some of the people exactly what you do. Because a novice may not know this. An advanced dancer and a professional dancer know this. What you do is you're going to take, notice her foot is in more of a flex position. I'm going to take this elastic, and I'm going to go to my other marking that's one inch away from the stay and I'm going to mark how snug she likes it. Go ahead and point your foot. You don't want to do it while the dancer's foot is pointed because when she goes on flat, it's going to be too tight. You don't want to do it when she's completely flexed because then it's going to make it a little too loose. It's really in between. She's kind of in between a flex and a point. Right? And then right there, easiest thing to do is grab your pen again and then mark it. That feels pretty good, right? As far as snug as? OK, Perfect. terrific, great. OK, and then you cut off the excess. Right? And then go ahead and take off the shoe. And then you know exactly where to put that ribbon on the other side. Right? So then our finished product of all of that looks like this. So I've got my elastic just as snug as I need it. I've got my ribbon going on the inside, right? nice and neat on the outside. And you're ready to go for your first point class. Kelsey, that was great. Thank you so much for helping me out today. No problem. And I hope you learned something about stitching your point shoes for a basic method. As always, don't forget to subscribe, click if you like it, and leave your comments below.